I usually do this one first, just to establish that I'm a very old gentleman. Woke up this morning, couldn't find my hair. Looked all over, there was nowhere. My waist's gone with it, my muscle tone too. But I still got me, and I still got you. Can't hear the phone, can't hear the door. Can't remember what I'm in the kitchen for. <laughs> Throw my back out when I tie my shoe. But I still got me, and I still got you still out there rolling. Providing I can find my car, still got my marbles. Just can't remember where they are. Sure ain't the lover that I was before. Middle of foreplay and I start to snore. I drool in my sleep, it's all terribly true. But I still got me, and I still got you, still bound to boogie. Which ain't so easy with my gout, still game for action. Just so my prostate don't find out. Still clean up pretty in my sneaky old style. Got you looking at me and I see you smile. I can handle anything they put me through. Long as I still got me, and I still got you. Ain't got no internet, ain't got a clue, but I still got me, and I still got you. <laughs> this is just about the first song I ever wrote. And there's a big 15-year gap in its construction because I've been raised in folk music of one kind or another and I knew so many songs about roving pirates and roving gamblers and Lord knows what else was moving that I thought it would be interesting to write a song about a roving garbage man. I got the first verse done and then, you know, bless her, my first wife, the mother of my children, and suggested that wasn't really a fit topic for a song. So I left it alone until many years later when I came back to it. Not bad-mouthing her either, because she was the one who said she really would like to know how that thing I've been working on, the last unicorn, turned out, and maybe I should go back to it, because I dropped it for years. So I owe her, apart from the kids. <laughs>
Carnegie Library, within walking distance of where I lived, reading very bleak and cynical novels of one sort or another. And there, a room on the second floor, where you could listen to music through earphones, little eight turntables, you could listen to music and read, which in my heartbroken state seemed about the best way to deal with the entire world. And why I decided to listen to a particular record, a particular French singer, I have no idea. I didn't know French. I'd grown up with a fair amount of New York Spanish. And I was trying to translate Mac the Knife into Spanish at the time. But I, to this day, don't know why I elected to listen to this. And, and here was this deep, hoarse, strange voice with this tight clip rhythm behind the guitar behind it, singing, Je rendez-vous avec vous. It simply means, I have a date with you, I'm going to see you. But the quality of the song is that nothing else matters. You know, my, you know, my landlady, since you know, I owe her too much money, won't let me eat at her table. I don't care. You know, I'll nibble on the back of your neck and live off that. You know, the sun, you know, withholds his light from me because I can't be bothered, you know, with his amateur style. I don't care. The only light I prefer is the light of your jealous eyes. The, you know, my landlord, since I break up everything anyway, throws me out. I don't care. Je m'en fous. Which is a very vulgar way of saying I, I don't care. I don't care doesn't cover it. But it'll do. Um, I don't care. I'll live under your dress. My boss, since I don't do a lick of work, throws me out of the office. I don't care. I'd rather sing for you anyway. And whatever the hell that was, I wanted to learn that. Mon Seigneur, l'astre solaire, comme je n'admire pas beaucoup, mon âme s'en fait, oui, du s'en fait, moi je m'en fous, j'ai rendez-vous avec vous. La lumière que je préfère, c'est la vôtre, vos yeux jaloux. Madame ma gargotière, comme je lui dois trop de sous, chaste sa table, mais sa table, moi je m'en fous, j'ai rendez-vous avec vous. La menu que je préfère, c'est la chair de votre cou. Thank you. 